Hello everyone, I'm Marva Greenleaf, Young Love After 50, and I have the honor and pleasure to spend time with Gail Minow, who is a numerologist, works with sacred geometry, and also a commodities broker since 1987. So she has a foot in both worlds. First, the linear world of the financial world that we walk in right now, and then the celestial uh, cosmos numerology understanding of how we're given this source to help guide our path especially when we're dealing with the unknown unfamiliar territory mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so Gil, tell me about how you the divine design that you speak about well I truly believe that prior to birth we create the blueprint for that life and we impress our name upon our parents to subconscious to give to us at birth, so we name ourselves. And nobody lands here willy-nilly. We come in with a specific time. At the moment of birth, when we take our first breath, we are imbued with the magnetic magnification of the planets and the alignment in the sky at that time. So we have an energy package and we have a blueprint. And it begins to play out immediately. And every seventh birthday <clears throat> the soul literally downloads every learn everything it learned those prior seven years so that it can leave at any moment and take everything it needs with it so it's from glory to glory as the Bible tells you it's from awareness to awareness from consciousness to consciousness and until you do seven of these or seven times seven or 49 you are not integrated enough so many times we see in our political factors that these people who want to run for office are still very young, they don't have the knowledge, they don't have the depth, they don't have the backdrop of life yet to really make the wise decisions that come once you begin to be age 50 and you get into your 50s. So these are some of what I call a divine plan. In that name is the karmic lessons that that soul has said it needs and wants to work with and it will attract the situation so it can do that. So it's never a just, I just landed here and I'm just going to put in my day, my time. Mm -hmm. So we have all that. I'll go through some of that and so people can easily see why, like the United States has its own blueprint. It knows what it has to do. And it's an oddity because it's the only place in the world that truly respects and develops the individual. And because of that, it has the ability to affect all parts of the world. And if you notice, they're copying what the United States did. They want their freedom. It's a number five country, and fives love freedom. And that's what this country is to give. It's a catalyst of change. Mm. So these are where I come from. And I always know it's a work in progress, that when we're out of here, there'll be more and more. If we destroy the planet, there'll be more and more, because the Creator keeps creating. Mm -hmm. So that it's, it's without faith, without doubt, that this is all working. No matter what you get involved in, who died today, and who just, you know, was just destroyed, it's all in a process of working. And you, what helps is to look where you came from on this planet, and that you used to bass each other in trees. And we used to really be violent. We have really tamed ourselves. If we could realize how much we've tamed ourselves by looking back at historical data, you would see. Mm -hmm. And when they talk about warming and birth, that the actual the birth rate, the population has gone up, but the birth rate is going down. And these are numbers that nobody really talks about, so they talk in sound bites. So this divine plan is to go from glory to glory, from you know, time here, time out of here, time back here, and go into other parts of the amusement park called Earth. <laughs> so we in the Western world are just learning a lot of what the Eastern mystics have been talking about. And we kind of, since we're the marketers of the world, we sell what might be a, a few dollars in India. We sell the service here uh, particularly say in Ayurvedic medicine, we sell it for a fortune here in the United States <laughs> because we're the business people. We sell our business. Mm -hmm. Now that's what's made America great, but that's also changing how we conduct ourselves in the world. We cannot go way, way forward we did before. Mm -hmm. But we, the blessing of America is that you can try things on here. Mm -hmm. Well, we have so many options and we want to just make certain that we hold on to all those options because the alternative 
ways the Ayurvedic medicine you know we do a lot with acupuncture and mm -hmm, the, the mm -hmm, oriental mm -hmm, herbal mm -hmm. medicine just to help keep this system you know being able to function well in this world that we live in and the universe that holistic medicine offers so as the as the as the climate wants to put us back in that little box put us back in that container it's futile we've outgrown it <laughs> so futile and to just enjoy what we're in we're, celebrate we're, life we're like teenagers, teenagers. Mm -hmm. we're just learning like teenagers this mm -hmm. country is a teenager and it's learning as a teenager which learn it makes big mistakes but it tries things on mm -hmm. and it's brave enough to do that yes, it takes a lot of and courage. it you know teenagers don't you know they'll just go ahead and do it again so there's no doubt in my mind America will be wealthy again mm -hmm. and as Americans develop instead of what's trendy or what's pop or what's new age or whatever, they really learn that the only journey is in. Someone wrote a book called Not to Go Within is to Go Without. Oh, that's where the well, the well is, the reservoir is, is within. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need to go to something, it's all there. You need to learn to hear and to listen to the really, what I call God's truth. So there's so many women's voices being heard today that's being given the microphone. That's on purpose. And, uh, and so purpose. as a woman, and I fully embrace what I can bring and, and contribute, mm -hmm. what would you say to us? I would say that the first 1,000 years we've just come through was a matriarchal society. Actually, it had been matriarchal for a long time. But it was it was accelerated during the thousands, so say from 1000 to 1999. That would put at the end of the ma of the I'm sorry, the patriarchal society was very strong, not the matriarchal, the patriarchal. So the end was 1999 was the end of the patriarchal society. So for the last 13 years, uh, we have been developing the rise of the feminine energy. This is a thousand year cycle. You're going to see more and more and more people, uh, females in power. Um, the females are the conscience of a society. And if you want a society to do well, then you must have equality and respect the rights of the female. It cannot exist. Take a look at the world and all those societies that do not, they do not thrive. Mm -hmm. They're way, way behind other societies that do. So what you will see is more women in power, um, and you will see what I call white, older, marginalized males. And they're very angry right now mm -hmm. because of this rise in the female power. It would not surprise me that eventually the female president comes actually from the military. Because of that Instead indoctrination, of yes. yes. Because of that indoctrination, that yes. language, that spoken, and how entrenched war is in our society. Well, it's been very entrenched. Um, it's a big business. So is food industry a big business? Mm -hmm. so pharmaceuticals. These are the pharmaceuticals are big business. So we don't eat properly. Um, I heard a mother on a radio station yesterday how proud she was that five of her sons were in the military, mm -hmm. each one of them following their father and grandparents' footsteps, and that she was so happy, um, which I understand it completely, um, but there's something, when you think about the depth of what that signifies, um, is that really the highest level of good for those young men? Mm -hmm. And. So the female is the conscience, and she's coming out. So you see a lot of problems with uh, laws that have to do with abortion, have to do with rape, have, you know, all these things. Mm -hmm. That are present, again, again, which we thought, we you know. We are looking at them to now <clears throat> take our power and use that, and um, so that there's equality in pay. And I sound like, you know, a bleeding liberal. That's, you know, I'm basically a moderate, but I mm -hmm. really, don't you know I just see see these numbers and it's only going to get more so once we go into this 2000 period mm -hmm. interesting is what I call once it Once we get into the 2020s it really it really kicks up speed well and that exhilarating accelerating exhilaration I think that's the pulse that panic and fear you know and it can be misled and since this this show this program is about um, you know, life after 50, a lot of people are having new and second, third relationships, new marriages. Um, 
But you're seeing a different type of family unit in America. We're also a hothouse for explaining what different types of families that work, mm -hmm. whether it's gay parents, single parents, dad is the sole support of his children, there's no one else. You know, it's all these different foster parents. It's to, to show and try on. Remember, we're an experimental station for the world, so we try it on here first. Mm -hmm and free to be a family mm -hmm. in all of its components. Mm -hmm. Gail Minogue, we've only just begun. I know. Isn't this great? <laughs> Talk about accelerating, acceleration. Young Love After 50, I'm so pleased to be a part of this shift in humanity at this time and enjoying the great Thank company you. along Thank the way. Thank you so much. My Thank you dear. for having me on. We'll see you in Lancaster. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you.